You could just. You'll you'll have you'll figure it out, Jerry Lynn. Cut, I'm, sorry, I'm gonna miss the show. Just cut your bathing suit at the waist. Where'd she go? I don't know. Okay. I that maybe the idea of painting her midriff. She went. Bah! I know. Yeah. She got nervous. She left. All right. Uh, oh, there she is with the cat. Oh. Yeah, Dave sent around a video of him playing Blue Sky in front of the cat. Yes, and I emailed him back and said, would he teach me how he finger picked and he was going to come tonight to teach me. Oh, well, maybe he's coming. Oh, good. I don't know. Well, uh, let's start. Let's start. Let's start with Betty. Why did you say that? Why? <laughs> You don't have to go first if you don't want to. If you insist, I will. I didn't insist, but okay. It's right. pouring here. I don't know. Is it pouring near you, Jerry Lynn? It's like torrential. No, All but I sudden. can see it's, it's on its way. Hey, Dwight. Okay. I want to call him in. Should I start? Uh, yeah. What do you want to do first? Well, um, I would like to do, because it's July, I still would like to do um, something patriotic. And I know that there's been a lot of terrible things going on in our country. But when I think of what's going on in Ukraine, for example, of people's houses being bombed, and they have to flee their country, you know, I'm thankful we don't have to do that. And also what's going on in Sri Lanka. I have a friend from Sri Lanka who visited there recently and she said people are starving there mm. because the government is so corrupt that the food supply is not getting to the people. And actually the president of Sri Lanka just fled the country. Right. But anyway, right. so I'm I'm thankful that we don't have to to deal with those those kind of things. So this song was sung at the Capitol Fourth concert. I don't know if any of you saw that. It's the outdoor no, concert that they do every year. And it had quite a variety of music. And um, it was an outdoor concert. And this one um, was sung as a tribute to Abraham Lincoln. And it, I have a little information about it, the Battle Hymn of the Republic. Obviously, it's a Civil War song. And um, the words were written in 1861 by Julia Ward Howe, who was a poet, abolitionist, and women's suffrage advocate. Um. Is listed as an American melody. I heard that. But that's fine. Sorry. An American melody uh, and a man named William Steff of South Carolina is credited with collecting and editing the tune. And early in the Civil War, this tune was used to create the Union marching song, John Brown's Body Lies a Moldering in His Grave, which I'm sure you've heard that. So it was like a popular tune. And then in 1861, uh, Julia used the tune as a basis for her poem. And and I, why don't y'all sing along with me? It's in C. You can you can play. All right. Here we go. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He has loosed the fateful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. Watchfars of a hundred circling camps. They have builded him an altar in the evening dews and damps. I can read his righteous sentence by the dim and flaring lamps. Our God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. 
transfigures you and me as he died to make men holy let us live to make men free while god is marching on glory glory hallelujah glory glory I love that song. Thank you. I know it's very. I'm not, I'm not very big on patriotic songs, but that one always gets me. Yeah, I, I was wondering why you guys don't have a patriotic book, song book. Um, I don't have an answer for that. <laughs> it's just a thought. Yeah. Those some inspired lyrics, though. I think they're really inspired. Yeah. Or stuff like even like, um, uh, what's that? Not this is my country, the uh, America the Beautiful. This Not land a, is your land. This land is your land. You know, yeah, stuff that, like that. That one, yeah, that's a that I consider a very patriotic song. Yeah, I like that one. All right, so shall I do the next one? Sure. Uh, here it is. Uh, this is in uh, book four, uh, book one, excuse me, page 27. Yes, and, 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 and since I am a girl, girl and I have my guy sitting right here, I'm going to change the lyrics, all right? All right. Okay. Well, there is a song, My Guy, right? Is there? My guy. My yeah. guy, talking about my guy. My guy. Is that a different one? No, that's the same one. <laughs> oh, who that's did that one? one? But there is a song. One, nobody can take away from my guy. My guy. Oh yeah, nothing in the world could do 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 do. My guy. My guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 There's nothing you could say to tear me away from my guy. There's nothing that's you can do because I'm stuck to. With that's like, right. That's right. Guy. Except me. Mary Wells. Yeah. But I always hear that different version from uh, what's that movie with Whoopi Goldberg where she has to become a nun. And they sing the choir. Oh sings. my God! Yeah, she sings "My God." Sure. And, uh, yeah, yeah. I hear that anyway. That's a cool movie. All right, so um, this song was written in 1964, actually written by Smokey Robinson and Ronald White of the Miracles. And Robinson's inspiration for this song was his wife, Miracles member Claudette Robinson. And it was sung by the Temptations, a group from Detroit who released a series of successful, successful singles and albums with Motown Records during the 60s and 70s. And uh, it was five guys, and they are known for their choreography, distinct harmonies, and dress style. And I, if you can, look up the video of them singing this. It's really cool. Like, they have the coolest clothes on and they're doing just the synchronized dance and three of the guys move forward they're they're like the harmony the basic harmony guys and then two of the guys step back and they're like the echoes so anyway it's very um adept really adept group 
So does anyone have comment about the temptations? No, they're awesome. They are awesome. All right, here we go. I've got sunshine on a cloudy day. When it's cold outside, I've got the month of May. This way, my guy, my guy, talking about my guy, my guy. I've got so much honey, the birds and me, me. I got a sweeter song, baby, than the birds and the bee. I guess you'll say. Can make me feel this way, my guy, my guy, talking about my guy, my guy. I don't need no money, fortune, or fame. I got all the riches, baby, one woman can claim. you'll say what can make me feel this way my girl my guy <laughs> talking about my guy my guy i guess you'll say what can make me feel this way my guy my guy talking about my guy Oh, yay. And there he is right there. Yay. Yay, yay Dwight. <laughs> yay for Dwight. We've been married, it'll be 53 years. Oh, geez. Jerry Lynn was at my wedding. Yes, she was. I thought it was, was so cool because it was at nighttime. Wasn't it at nighttime or afternoon? It was at night. And, and you want to know why we did it? Oh. Why you got married? We already started it. At so. night. Because <clears throat> my mom was a widow and we didn't have money to have a meal, like a dinner. Oh. So we just had a light buffet after our 7.30 p.m. wedding. So that's why we had it at night. Oh. Candlelight wedding. And the pastor got up there and, and said, <laughs> I can't see. <laughs> it's really dark, but we made it through. It was pretty cool. It was like the first time I, I had seen anybody get married and at you know night with the candles, and it was pretty good. I'm glad yeah. you liked it. Well, obviously it worked. So it worked. It worked. So, you know, it was a recipe for success. So congratulations. Oh, that's great. All right, let's go to Marisa. Hi, everybody. Hi. Um, so I just wanted to make a comment about patriotic feelings, patriotism. Um, I always feel like, uh, you know, patriotism gets a bad rap because, you know, some people use it to, like, uh, hide their racism. So uh, it is it can be obnoxious, but um, I feel like I'm patriotic. You know, I love my country, although it kind of sucks right now. But um, you know, and I really feel like uh, a lot of people um, from maybe opposite views to me, um, you know, they feel like they're the real patriots. But you know what? That's what America is supposed to be about. You don't get to tell me how to be a patriot and I don't get to tell you either. So, um, you know, that's what America is about, I guess. But anyway, that's what I want to say about that. All right. So. My first song I've sung before, but I love it. It's uh, Gold by Emmy Lou Harris. Okay. All right. Oh, the night is growing colder and the stars have lost their shine. And I have been forsaken by everything I thought was mine. For in the darkest hour, when the final story's told, no matter how bright I glitter, baby, I could never be gold. You gave up your finest treasures for the one you saw in me. 
should sparkle like a diamond, have silver line my soul. No matter how bright I could a baby, I could never be gold. You look so high and low for heaven. I tried so hard to show the way, and though I flew on wings of angels, my feet were always made of clay. I could come trailing clouds of glory, but you saw nothing to behold. No matter how bright I could a baby, I could never be gold. Very nice. That Thank was you. gorgeous. Thank you. Who so wrote lovely. that and when? What's that? Who wrote that and when? I'm not sure when. Uh, it's Emmy Lou Harris. Oh. And it's from her album called Wrecking Ball, which mm -hmm. is from the 90s, maybe. So, yeah. We did a great job. Thank you. you All know, right. Uh, 1995, is... she, she did that. What's that? It, that came out in 1995. Oh, I got him right on the head then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hope I love that whole album, Wrecking Ball. It's great. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. And my other song is Sound of Silence, which um, oh, that, strangely that. makes me think of the one. Of, it was one of the uh, Planet of the Apes movies. It was one where um, they those people are living under underground and they're obsessed with the bomb, which really oh, scared yeah. me when I was a kid. <laughs> and they take their their hat their hats off and their heads are like weird shapes. I don't know. <laughs> Very weird. Anyway, this always makes me think of that. I don't know why. <laughs> and I'm playing it with the uh, capo on the first fret um, just to make it a little higher. So, okay. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. Because a vision softly creeping left its seeds while I was sleeping. And the vision that was planted in my brain still remains within the sound. Dreams I walked alone, narrow streets of cobblestone, meet the halo of a street lamp. I turn my collar to the cold and damp, damp. When my eyes were stabbed by the flash of a neon light that split the night, and touched the sound. light I saw 10,000 people maybe more people talking without speaking people hearing without listening people writing songs that voices never share no one dare just heard the sound of silence that I, you do not know, silence like a cancer grows, hear my words that I might teach you, take my arms that I might reach you, but my words like silent raindrops fell, and echoed in the wells of silence. People bowed and prayed to the neon god they made, and the sign flashed out its warning in the words that it was for me, and the sign said the words of the prophets are written on the subway walls and tended walls, whispered in the sound of silence. Mm-hmm.
Brilliant. You know, I can get why uh, why you'd be reminded of that Planet of the Apes song uh, movie. Yeah. Because you know they live in the subway, right? Stuff's right. on the wall. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now you will have that reference too. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Thank you, Marisa. I give to awesome. you. <laughs> Great. All right. uh, I, um, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Karen, do you have something? N no. Come on, Karen, you okay. can do it. Oh. Mm. Okay. Yay. <laughs> ah, yay. I do this, but probably badly. So, because okay, I good. We'll, just we're recording it, so I'll I, I will make a oh, special gonna, oh, video good. of it for you. Yeah. Um, and there's a certain part that I can't play right at all. So anyway, it's um, "Our House" by Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young. Oh, cool! Great. And I haven't practiced. Okay. I heard, so, it, I heard an interview with Graham Nash today. Oh. Yes, and did he say that I'd be playing one of his songs tonight? Yeah, he said, wait till you hear Karen do it, he said, <laughs> yeah. Okay, all right, I, uh try to get Actually, there. Actually, he talked about his relationship with Joni Mitchell, which is what this song is about. Ah, uh, yes. Did I play this already? No. No, I don't think so. Okay. But you go, go ahead. Let me see if I can get through it. Can you hear it? I light the fire, you place the flowers in the vase that you bought today. Staring at the fire, hours and hours while I listen to to say is by the time I get to the end of a song that's when I just really start to get it <laughs> I know that feeling but if you work on that one I think that's a really good song for you your voice fits it you get your voice is really nice all you got to do is just get more familiar with it 
I think it's a, I think it's a good one for you. It's a good song for me. And I, as I've said this before so many times in this group, I can play this like 80% better when I'm not here. Yeah. I just like go mental. But well, I'm. Yeah, no, there, there is something to be said for performing, and then that it's a whole different thing than sitting by yourself. I know. But, and we've, I've been here like what, a year and a half, and I still can't get it right. But I, I keep trying. Oh, the more you do it, the easier I should talk. But yeah. I mean, the more you do it, the better it'll, it'll be. I'm going to practice this song, and then I'm going to do it again in like three weeks. That's perfect. Okay, well, thanks for listening to me. It was really good. Thank you for participating. I Thank like you for playing uh, with the uh, at home audience. Yeah, this is like the worst. I, you know, I'm used to being really good at certain things, I, and I'm the worst at this. I'm not used to being the worst at something, but it's really good karma to practice being the worst at something. Oh, yeah. And, and I don't think you're the worst. I've heard worse. Just no, so no, I've heard worse, too. I've heard worse too. Heard worse. Know, my philosophy is if I'm having fun, I'm not trying to get anywhere. I am never going to be any better on the ukulele than I am now. You, 10 years from now, I'm still going to be strumming the same way, but that's okay. It's okay with me. It's okay. Yeah. But it would be good if I could hit the right note. Yeah. Just, yeah well, yeah, we, don't you remember what Mr. Rogers said? What? We like you just the way you are. Yeah, I know. Thank you. And you made up that La La stuff. It sounded fine to me. If I if I didn't know the song, I'd be like, oh, that's exactly how it's supposed to go. I have to go back and look, because, you know, there, I, I, I've only heard this song 10 million times, but I couldn't remember how they did the La La. So. How does it go, John? Sing it for me. Now I can't do it. Okay. All right. It's all right. It's all practice. You and Lala's were just fine. Thank you. Thank Plus, you. there's like what three of them, right? That are usually doing that la la part. I mean, it's not usually in not harmony fun. too, right? Yeah, but you know, yeah, I, where were your harmonies with, you, with yourself, Karen? I mean, come on. Well, you know, I, I'm lucky if I can get the melody right. I told you, my husband, my husband's in the other room, and I'll be singing. And I hear in the other room, I hear him going, "No," no. <laughs> because that's not the melody. You're making it up. He goes, "No, no," and I said to him, "You know, when I'm in my ukulele group, everybody goes, "Good try, good work," and they all clap for me." I say, you can't go in the other room and be yelling, no. <laughs> tell, him he, tell him if he can do it better, here's the ukulele, dude. Go yep. ahead. Well, yeah. he can actually sing the melody, but not that he's a singer, but he can, yeah. Well, so, ask him how it's done, and then you, you'll, you'll accompany him. Well, I told him, you come with me and sing next time. Yeah, there There's you go. It's about just singing a song and singing with an instrument. It's different. It is. Oh, it's, it's really, it's... Uh, I, it is. I still Bob have Dylan a lot of trouble. Said it was hard to do. Bob Dylan said it was hard to do. Bob Dylan, they're a good company, right? Well, he didn't become. A, he didn't win a Nobel Prize for guitar playing. Just saying. Right. Or his voice. Or his voice, right? Right. That's I love his voice. I'm one of the few people in the world that love his voice. Oh, I love his voice too, but I wouldn't say he has a beautiful. You know. It's his. It's his voice. I like. I like people that let their own voice shine yeah no you're right he does, yeah all right cool thank you um how about you jerry lynn we're getting philosophical here tonight we got patriotism and all kinds of stuff going on anyway um this is a bit of a departure but maybe it'll be okay um i didn't plan a lot and i'm hoping john can do that magic because i really i don't know the song and well when we come to the song we'll talk about it. but anyway this person, see if you can guess. I don't think you'll guess, but um, he's a graduate of Hampshire College where he focused on musical theater after working on 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, which, uh, which was a short-lived Broadway musical. Um, it was by Alan Lerner and Leonard Bernstein, but it still didn't go anywhere. He composed several children's musicals that were produced in New, New York City. And for a while he worked on selling advertising space 
um, for our computer publication. And then he changed companies and he went, he worked for Billboard magazine and he became associate publisher. I didn't know that. Um, then he moved to Los Angeles and him and his wife became regulars playing at the Rose Bowl flea market. That should give you a little tip, flea market. Yeah, yeah, the way, I, no, never mind. <laughs> and having admired his father-in-law's skill on this instrument, he purchased a used Martin Tenor one at the market and he quickly fell in love with the instrument. And he has been credited be, be, for being the driving force behind the recent resurgence of the ukulele. So really? I, I wanted to talk to him kind of like full circle about, you know, we started with George Formby a couple, um, a couple of weeks ago and he's like the, you know, the modern day incarnation of George Formby in a way. So do we know who it is? Don does, because I gave him the music. Anyway, I'm not even sure how to say his name. It's either Jim uh, Beloff or Jim Beloff. I think I'm, it's Beloff. Is it Beloff? Okay, because I was looking for like a double E if it was Beloff, but I'm going to go with Beloff. That's how every time anyone's mentioned him, that's how it is. And that's I think that's what, I don't know, he's never said his name, but when he's introduced, they say here's Jim Beloff. Okay. So. <laughs> Didn't he write all the books, the 365 days of you? Yes. Oh, okay. So that's what I wanted to, if you do not have this book, this is how I started. And what our youth group at uh, the, our congregation uses, I mean, look at all the tabs and everything. Great book. It really, really helped me because it has the chords. It has a starting note. It's usually, you know, a good version in a decent key. And um, we got the, people just refer to it as the yellow book or the blue book. This yeah. is the year edition. And I guess he's got, he's got several more out. But anyway, if you don't have that book, I would highly recommend it. And his wife, you know, do you know, and are you going to talk about Liz? I am. Okay, good. I'll shut up. Go ahead. Okay. So not finding um, any current music available for the ukulele, he started um, writing it, you know, compiling it himself. Covered a dealer's cache of unused music from um, decades earlier. And with his wife, Liz, they published Jumpin' Jim's Ukulele Favorites in 1992. I bought that book. That was my very first ukulele book. I couldn't understand it. The chords, I just did not know what I was doing. The chords seemed really difficult, but that was his first one. It, its success spawned a series of music books for the ukulele, and he's expanded into DVDs as well. He quit his job at Billboard, and he and his wife created Flea Market Music Incorporated. The rise in popularity of the ukulele and the company's sales have continued to grow with over 600,000 Jumpin' Jim books in print. Um, and they have two dozen music books that cover all kinds of genres. So the guy's done well. Here's a picture of him. Just talk about your regular looking Joe kind of guy. There he is. Yeah. He's um, awesome. He's really nice to talk to and uh, yeah, really I, I almost called there today just so I could get the pr pronunci pronunciation of his name, but I thought that's a stupid reason to call. So I'm, I'm glad you told me what it was. Um, he also has written a concerto for ukulele and symphony orchestra entitled <laughs> Luke Can't Be Serious. And it debuted with the Wallingford Symphony Orchestra in 1999. Um, and it's been recorded a lot. Finding the availability of good ukuleles to be rather limited, Beloff was interested in developing an inexpensive quality instrument. This inspired his brother-in-law, Dale Webb, who was an engineer, um, to design the fluke and flea ukuleles. In 1999, Webb and his wife, Phyllis, so Jim, Jim's wife, Phyllis, is married to Dale, and they formed the Magic Fluke Company. Um, blah, blah, blah. They are located in Sheffield, Massachusetts, and they use American made parts and materials to produce their instruments using environmentally responsible methods. And we took a field trip there a couple years ago. Um, it's a really nice place. They hand, they hand make this. So this was my magic flute from there. You go there or you, you call them ahead of time because they go by appointment now. Um, but you pick out the wood you want and all the different parts and they put it together right right then and there. And Mike always tells the story that he went there and, and um, you know, he gave them all his desires and somebody came out and said something like, now, 
you know, Trisha is going to be making your ukulele today. So I mean, it was just cool. It's very, if you want something really personal and well-made, kind of pricey, but they have other ones. Um, they're so like plastic um, stand-up ones. They're not like Waterman's. They're, they're better quality than that, but they stand up by themselves because they have like a triangle on the bottom. Anyway, um, do, 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 do. they said the newest addition to the line is the Firefly. That was a banjolele available. That's like that is with soprano or concert. They now produce an electric uke called the Fluke SB and an electric bass uke called the Timber. And the Timber is named after their dog. They have a collie dog named Timber. And they also um, produce violins and fiddles called crickets. Um, in 1995, Beloft produced, produced the first annual Uketopia concert in Santa Monica, California. And so that kind of started this whole ukulele jamming concert stuff. Um, they're on their 10th one now so far. They've done 10 of these. And his personal life is, you know, he's married to Elizabeth in 1987. They live in Connecticut and they continue, continue to travel and promote the ukulele and their products. And when I, every time I went there, because it's only like an hour away, um, I used to have a yukin, and I'm going to still have a yukin. I usually had it around my birthday in April, so hopefully it'll happen next year. Just a, a fun event, you know, where we all get together and play ukulele. Everybody's invited from all over. And um, every time I went there, they were very generous with donations. They donated, you know, earrings and books and straps and all kinds of stuff. Really nice people. Um, then another article that I read said that there's a new book as of December 21 that he wrote called Uketopia. And um, it talks about all of his experiences, um, you know, starting the company and it tells stories how he got his start in the ukulele world and how he was able to work with uke celebrities like George Harrison, Bette Midler, Sam Neill, I didn't know he played, William H. Macy, big ukulele player, and Eddie Vedder, of course. Um, he said, all the writing took place over three months. If you can call it a silver lining of 2020, I was able to do it all over the last quarter of the year. I'm just grateful for the opportunity to be able to tell the story. Um, blah, 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 blah. He stumbled upon a uke at a flea market at the Rose Bowl in California, and it completely changed our lives. He had been playing guitar for years. As Jim and Liz fell more in love with the instrument, they found that there wasn't a ton of material out there for enthusiasts. And they, he convinced a publisher to let him publish a book. So he had to kind of fight for it. And it did much better than they thought. And as they say, the rest is history. And they've published over 30 songbooks and they have a million copies in print. Over the years, Jim has had the chance to meet and work with several prominent celebrities due to his expertise in the uke field, but one stands out above the rest. The best one, he said, was the time when George Harrison came to his house when he lived in California, and we played together one afternoon. Can you imagine? How cool would that be to sit down and play with George Harrison? It turned out that Harrison had been a fan of the ukulele and given his friends copies of one of Jim's songbooks as a gift. And one day Harrison was visiting friends in Los Angeles and the friends suggested that they look up Jim and Liz. And the next thing anybody knew, the crew came to my house and we were sitting there playing with um, George Harrison. It was amazing having a Beatle in the house for um, the afternoon, nothing can top that. Um, asked what he likes most about the ukulele, he says he points to the ease that anyone can play it. It's an informal instrument. It can definitely be taken to the extremes but by and large, a wide variety of people of all stages of life can still play it. In fact, he says there are now ukulele clubs, imagine that, ukulele clubs, wow. for, adults, for adults which can actually have real health benefits. It's been shown that playing an instrument is very good for keeping the brain healthy for older folks. Oh, well, there you go. And You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna join one of those clubs, <laughs> yeah. just saying. <laughs> and you know, um, a couple weeks ago, I did a corner about gardening songs, and I read that if you garden, you're 34% um, less likely, 40, 34% less likely to develop Alzheimer's. So if you garden and play the ukulele, you're good. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> when not playing with his ukuleles, Jim is also well known around Clinton. That's where he lives. 
for helping the George Flynn Classical Concert Series, a rare opportunity to hear world-class music for free in Clinton. Thanks to a trust established by Clinton resident George Flynn in the early 1990s, the series provides for premier musicians to conduct shows at no cost. So what a good guy this guy is. And we have him to thank for a bulk of our songs. And um, he, wrote, he wrote some songs. He's not the greatest singer in the world. But what I was hoping if John could play the video and put the music up, we would play the song twice with Jim. Can you so I have, a, I have the recording of it, which is better. OK. So you have the recording and the song sheet, and you can put them up at the same time? Yep. Awesome. Then I will mute myself and try to learn the we'll song. That way. I wanted to just add one thing. Um, you know the TriStar logo of the of the you know mo the movie the movie studio TriStar. Yeah, yeah. With the flying horse. Yeah. Liz did that. Did she really? Yeah. Oh, nice. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. I wonder why they moved back here because it sounds like they were doing really good in Los Angeles. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Why well, they did, but. All right, so this is a little song. I think it's called That Hawaiian Melody. It's a cute little song. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, so let me put up the... Take your time. I think my friend Dawn just came on. Yeah. Hi, Dawn. Hi. Hi, hi. Hi, Dawn. We're, We're almost here. done. Well, you're <laughs> almost done. All right, here... But is... welcome. Okay, did um, uh, Betty play yet? Yeah. I played first. Yeah, no. it's a snooze you lose there, baby. But I just remembered it went in my brain just now. We're on the way to a band concert. And I just remembered. You know, Don so. records these and you can you can look at it on his YouTube. Yeah. Oh, you'll have to teach me how to do that. I'll send you a link. Yeah, you just oh. go on YouTube and put put his name in and then you can see all of the all of them. Yeah. Okay, because then you guys are going to be rich and famous someday, and then I'll just, you know, <laughs> yeah. I'll go around giving everybody yeah. flyers and whatever. So Yeah, rich and famous for ukulele jams. I don't know. I'm not... <laughs> poor, poor and infamous. Poor and infamous, right. Come and play okay. at the Rody Theater. Come and play at our theater. Okay, ready? Yeah, I'm ready for it. All right, we're going to try to play along with this audio of this guy. Everyone can see it, right? Yes. Okay, here we go. From the land of sand and sea, I brought home a memory. And it won't stop haunting me. That Hawaiian hell. Sun and silver rain, blue and emerald island chain, linger like a sweet refrain. That Hawaiian melody, that warm and gentle island greeting, had me from the start. a charming little tune that Hawaiian melody that warm and gentle island 
such a charming little tune. pretty good yeah isn't that a cute little song yeah yeah it's he has a, he has a very nice voice yeah well i mean it's not Pomerati or anything but it's nice and no it's so no. jerry lynn i remember in the past like ukulele used to be like a hawaiian music thing now why was that well that's where they're from well no they're actually it was an instrument in Portugal that was kind of like a ukulele. I think it was called this, it looked like the word machete. That's what it looks like. I don't That's know. That's right. It. Yep. But it ended up in Hawaii and then they kind of, you know, revised it and it just became popular. Um, and that's where most of um, the, you know, finest runs are made and all that. But, you know, we kind of, we like Hawaii, but we don't want to be always associated with Hawaiian music and Tiny Tim and all that. You know, I mean, ukulele music has gone far. So whatever that means. Well, the, um, uh, I think, uh, wasn't it Magellan who went to Hawaii and brought a machete? Did he really? I don't know. Uh, or maybe I was, maybe it was, it was uh, Cook. I don't know, but it was, you know, one of the early explorers oh. that, I think you're right because um, I remember reading something about Cook, and I also remember reading something about who went to like the North Pole, and they, they brought a ukulele with them. What was one of the first explorers to the North Pole? Uh, I know guy. who you're talking about. I don't know the name. Yeah, that guy had a ukulele. Anyway, okay, I think you can take it down now. Did you want to, You said you wanted to do it. You don't want to do it twice. I don't know. Do we want to do it again? We can take a vote. Uh, we're seeing, I'm seeing no. Okay. All right. That's all right then. But, but that, um, that was better just, than, um, than me trying to, trying to lead you in it. So thank you. I would just add that the, the Beelofs are, you know, these just incredible ambassadors for ukulele. Um, I've had the opportunity to play with them a little bit. Just, you know, they came, oh. they came to um, uh, uh, old songs twice. I saw them oh, drive. nice. They were here this year. They came this year. Nice. Um, they always bring a box of old, of miscellaneous CDs, ukulele CDs, and they sell them for a dollar a piece. And it's like, you know, I don't know where he gets them or whatever, but um, I found all these little treasures. You know, so when uh, Mike went to old songs this year and I said, look, when you go, buy me, buy me, you know, I'm, I'll give you the money, buy 10 CDs for me. And, you know, there's always some good stuff. There's like these little treasures of, of ukulele music. It's kind of funny. I always get a kick out of that. <laughs> um, and anyway, uh, Jim and Liz both are very personable and, and really pleasant to talk to and listen to. And they're also really, Jim's a really good teacher. Nice. I can't remember what the occasion was, but they did something. So I made them a, a silly card and I sent it to them and they sent me an email back thanking me for the card. I mean, they're just like, like you said, nice. nice. Yeah. Uh, the, so a friend of the other, just the, Jim had t always tells the story about meeting George Harrison. Mm -hmm. And there they were at the flea market or whatever, selling ukuleles or music or something. And some guy comes over and says, you know, oh, you got ukuleles. You know, my friend George would be interested. <laughs> and that's how they got it. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool. Great. So now we've come full circle. we got George Forby. We know how he started. we got this guy. And then it's good. we gave him both the props, props that they deserve. There's our corner, right? Corner. Yay. Thank you, Jerry Lynn. Next week is the corner that Linda and I are gonna, um, she's gonna do a song and it's a repeat. I didn't even realize I had already done it, but it, we already are planned it, so. Well, you know what? We're not gonna remember unless no, we I go don't. back to the videos. I told you last time I looked at my notes, I have a stack like this of corners, you know, paper from the, it was, this will be 111. I've done 111 of these things. Wow, the teacher at heart. 
Yeah. You're quite our historian, I have to say, Jurenman. So, and um, what was I going to say? I think there's a book in there somewhere. Yeah, maybe. Ukulele stories. Ukulele stories. I mean, the corner, the corner, you could call it the corner. Call it the corner. That's pretty good. I, yeah, the ukulele corner. I think you should submit it to some publishers. John, could I ask you a question? Of course. This is the first time I've been aware that you could look at these things on YouTube. So at what date would this one be put on YouTube? Uh, today's the 13th. So when you go on YouTube and let me, I'll, I'll just, let me uh, get a link for you. Um, you, you know, if you search, if you search under my name, cause I have a channel, right? Yeah, I just, I just found it, but I was just wondering like, would be on like tomorrow or? Oh, yeah, I'll put oh. it up in the next day or two. Betty, are you going to sing anymore? No, sister. Okay, then I'm going to go because I'm at the band concert. Okay, bye, honey. Thank you. Bye, Dawn. Right, I'll Thanks try for joining it next us. time. Next okay. time, I'll, I'll do it right, I promise. Okay, thank you. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> so if you found the link, you just pay attention. I'll I'll send you, I'll, Betty, I'll, I'll let you know when I put it up. Okay, thanks. Yeah. I never knew that before. Well, somebody yeah. has been uh, somebody has been a real nag um, to him, unfortunately. Yeah, I won't say any names, Jerry Lynn. I mean, I just I'm not going to mention that because I don't want to put you, I don't want to put anyone on the spot. You know? I know. So it's been it's been this source of uh, a, a mild amuse, amusement. You know, we record somebody doesn't always put them on the YouTube, and <laughs> then I I learn a lot by watching myself and seeing how badly I fumbled. And I learned from that. So anyway, I was I was always harping on him, like, when are you going to put it up? When are you going to put it up? So I think he's- No, you know what? Just so you know, it's always, you're always really lovely about it. And there's never, I never feel like I'm being badgered or whatever. And there's, and you don't go, and you're not going, you're not judging me. You know, there's, yeah, there's none of that. It's all good. <laughs> so in answer to your question, I mean, you know, sometimes they'll be, they'll be current and sometimes they won't be current. Although I'm up to date now. I know you are. Yeah. Good um, I, I didn't put up Saturday because I don't think it recorded well. So I'm not going to bother with that one. Yeah. The jams. I don't know really why people would watch the jams. Why would they watch that? Yeah. But, you know, but Jerry comes with three cameras yeah. and a recorder also. I'm like, what the heck? He's trying to learn how to do it. It's not so much that he thinks we're terrific. He's just trying to learn his equipment, I think. Oh, uh, could be. Yeah, he's one of those equipment whores like Carmen and me. Well, all right, let's call it then. Thanks everybody for coming. We're so sad that you're sick, John. You don't have COVID, do you? I do not. I've tested twice already. That's so good. I'm good. I know I'm fine. It's just a cold. I haven't had a, I haven't had been sick at all for you know two years at least. Yeah. Because of COVID. <laughs> yeah, I know that. And that's the one good thing about it. That's I right. don't know where I got this though, you know. So oh. well, I hope you get better soon, John. I will. Um, uh, it's it's already you know it's already moving through my system. I'm drinking a lot of tea and resting, and you know, I'm doing all the right stuff. Well, thanks for doing this tonight. So you're not going to sing for us, right? I'm not going to sing. No. Uh. -uh. Okay. Well, Thank you for your songs, Marisa. They're always beautiful. They are yeah, very beautiful. Yes. Yeah. It's really unique. and I enjoyed yours too, Karen. Oh well, thank you. I I I really actually didn't realize that all of this goes up on YouTube, but that's uh -huh. like I don't, I don't think anybody will ever find me there, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, I, I'll highlight you if you'd like, Karen. You know. Oh, thanks a lot. No, I'm such a, not a public person. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, and feel better soon. Thanks. See y'all yeah. soon. Bye. Bye Jerry. It was all girls. It was all blessings. Girls. Blessings. Being girls. I like girls. Yeah. Have a good week. Bye. Yeah. Bye, everyone.